again and welcome to episode 3 of Persians, the podcast. A great many of the Greek tragedies that have survived the lottery of time are named for their choruses. The Bacchae, the women of Troy, the libation bearers, and of course, the Persians. Nowadays a chorus of 12 or 15 performers seems an expensive luxury and a producer's nightmare, You might see such a company in a well-funded Broadway musical, but it's less likely elsewhere. Even by the time Shakespeare decided to put a chorus in plays like Henry V, he wrote it to be performed by a single speaker. We have to bear in mind that the chorus is where it all started. Greek drama developed from complicated, beautiful choral dances that were known as dithyrams, And the famous story goes that a performer called Thespis was the first to step out of the line of dancers and begin a dialogue. And so drama was born. What's important is that the chorus is the beating heart of it all. There are a great many features that appear in several Greek plays, and indeed in the Persians we have some that appear nowhere else, but every single one of them, comedy or tragedy, has a chorus. Nowadays, our focus and even our attention might be drawn to different parts of a play, particularly if there's a star actor involved. But for a Greek audience, the chorus was one of the main attractions. Here's Edith Hall again on how excited the audience would have been for the chorus. They were the absolute heart and soul of it. And it, it, from that point of view, it's, I think it's a bit more like our modern idea of the musical, because... Were actually, you were, they were actually waiting for the next big song and dance number. That, that was the highlight. People today tend to want to get back just to the single actors talking and, and regard the choruses as a bit of a nuisance. That is absolutely not how the ancient Greeks saw it. They wanted these choruses and they trained for months. They trained for six months. Incredible drill to make sure that they were highly synchronised um, and, and, and singing perfectly in unison. No, it was, it was, it, everybody who's ever, you know, been in a chorus line knows how difficult it is to sing and dance at the same time, let alone synchronously with everybody else. As mentioned, the chorus would have trained for six months before the performance within the city's theatre festival. Being a part of a chorus was something of a civic duty, and, as Oliver Taplin now explains, it could cost quite a lot of money. The chorus were more or less uh, requisition kept, you know, their, their, their accommodation, their food, their time was paid for by the by the rich citizen, by in this in this case by by Pericles, um, as well as their costumes and their masks, um, um, all prepared over the course of the winter, ready for this big big event in the spring. Young men of conscription age would have been called up to be a part of a chorus at least once. And so a huge proportion of the theatre-going public would probably have this experience at some point in their lives. As civic duties go, it would probably be more fun than being on a jury. And if your production was the winner in the festival, you could brag about it for the rest of your life. But a huge, huge amount of work went into it. The chorus sang... They danced in what were very sophisticated and complicated arrangements. And of course, they had a story to tell. Since so many plays were based on the same material, the same stories, the same mythologies, it was often up to the playwright to find a new spin on an old tale. For the audience watching the first performance of the Persians, it must have been intriguing to see the chorus processing into the theatre, ready to perform the first portion of the play. The chorus is made up of the elders of Persia, a kind of advisory council that have been selected for their wisdom. They are now too old to fight, and so they've been left behind. Aeschylus introduces the play, and the spin he's going to put on this story, with an extraordinary list of names, a catalogue of all the great generals and leaders that processed across Persia to attack Greece. On paper, and certainly these days, Such a list might seem a bit lifeless, but it's anything but just a list. The names are mentioned because they have gone to fight for their country, and this is how they can be remembered. Here's Edith Hall again. The the, the idea, the problem with list is is very much uh, uh, 
device of an overly literate society. Uh, if you if you listen to Homer, it's absolutely packed with lists. Lists are how catalogues of ships and things. That's how people remember things in an oral society. Uh, and, and Greek tragedy is absolutely not was not written to be read. As in Homer and in our play, lists also feature in traditional Irish storytelling and mythology. You can trace a family through a list of names, who fought in the battle, who was at a great meeting, and so on. So the list of names that the Persian elders shares is important. It gives a sense of the breadth of the whole empire, from India to Egypt, and the variety of peoples that are under Persian control, and who came together to fight. Xerxes must have caught quite a dash as his huge army made its journey to the west, allowing all the peoples of the empire to see his might as he passed. Here in Ireland, we're a rather smaller country, but despite this, we have an unusually high number of accents and dialects. Perhaps it's because we love to talk so much that our identity is very much woven into the way we speak, and in Irish, there are numerous very distinct regional dialects from the north, the south, the west and the east. The actors who will be performing the Persians are from all over Ireland, and so you'll hear a variety of accents. Consider this our little nod to the expanse of Persian experience. Here now is the first speech of this Persian chorus, the old men who are assembled in one of the four capital cities, Susa. Dr. Jill Shoydi na Bershach Oranya, na Persi ata emiha kuntir na Grege. Agasus kuiv noidi shen edon balas rachmasach lienta lehor. Ise antir na Cersis fein on ri e fein makle Darius around the shen. Javar bua ar shin shirachta kunsul achamed ed a reim. Achama fein. Tan cri in our lor, Bora her moon eg tour na tabushte. Tamut fui wort gomor adiv ille on ri, Agus a arim, fui yer me orga, Martan hocht ille a rugus an osh, bale hello, Agus buenta na var og, Agus fos, nil tachter ed bit a hus, no er hapel, taka. Gudi kahir na bershach. The chorus explains that they are the faithful elders of the country, chosen by Xerxes to oversee the golden palace he has left behind. They've come together because they are worried, troubled at the lack of news from the Persian forces. They say no messenger has come back yet, on horseback or on foot. Now they list the great men who have travelled in that horde from cities all across the empire. The men have left the Persian strongholds of Susa, Agbatana and Kisia, and cities as diverse as Memphis, Thebes and Babylon. If you'd like to read along in English, there is a translation on the website, persiansthepodcast.com, but don't worry. You don't need to know where all these men came from or what weapons they were famous for. Just listen to the sheer expanse of the army. Jimmy Derlo, Egg and Susa, Agus Egg Batana, Agus Dunfort Oris Kissia. Jimmy Derlo, Quijaku Ed Wing Kapel, Quijelaku a Longa, Quijelaku the Hul Nagos, a Glushacht Gustadera. In your me to loha coggy. Lame fair contossi er homa amestres, agus artin franes, megabates, agus asbates, canary nebershach. Reha a toffy yelchene on ordry. Quiv noidy na hull ornia, loch the horrier side agus bow. Marquee gun hoim. Scan rule for your ryerk agusta horrihe among kaha, the war dilshach dawin a good mishni. Agus artem bares ob gila carabit, agus mas istris, agus imias ursel, doch litel and the wawa, 
agus far an dakes agus sostanes ag bagart a chuid capal. Awin mor agus harhul na níle, da lígsí a hilacú chun siúl, sús is gánes agus fagastagón a rúgús an Egypt, agus ar sármes grí an rílahóir ar Memphis naifa, agus ar iú mardós an gofernóir ar hýbs ársa, agus rávadóirí comasacha os na bógaíhe, slúa gan áirif. Lán díormú da winter lídia iad, Dine a wairan fwy ho agus a tawa ganas ar wyntyr ilan na hilchrihia. Ia tukach an cyn ag mitragatis agus ar teos uasil. Tyrni riwla agus ol tashgi o'r chahir sartis. Tha siad sitte an ilamwyd carabod dyrmwy mor a dyf. Cwyd acw a garabwyd fwy a gha fola, cwyd acw fwy rhi, Rair gysganrúl yed lebranu arhw. Ta oetrahori tymolus naifa eg brú ar ai, eg sa cwyng an dyrse ysliach sig reig. Mardon agus tarabys gha inion an lansa agus locht misia na slia edrym agus an fabul a ta sebyr an oor. Cwyrn si chugyn a dyrma fada fadaloch da hluetia da gachem thais Mórnialí á njumpar ag báid, agus ia tjú da chyrin na mwynín in a skil, agus a misnach leis a mawa. O gach e an ard dan ás, lianan trafkysi ag fara an chlif, da war glí uafwyr an mórri. Siohiad blá na var, blá tír fersia, a ta imihe ló. Tyr ymla na hosia a chohiad, ta siad fwy chw agos bron ymla e cwy yn y nye le geim na chrwa e coeref na leihanta e cri dyreir mara imion an amsir y wad. All of Asia, they say, the mother that nurtured them grieves anxiously for these men. Parents, wives, counting the days and worrying as these days add up. This first segment of the play is to introduce us to the location of the story. The chorus establishes that we are in Susa, that they're waiting for news of the conflict, and that they're nervous that things might not have gone well. Next, the chorus reminds us of what they do know of the battle so far. They describe how the king's powerful army conquered the Hellespont, with a pontoon bridge, and crossed over into the lands they meant to conquer. Back and forth, the chorus describes how the Persian army is almighty, and its men are brave. Adam on ri a shkris on kaharacha, ta si hanahen imi ha sal har hal na gorsum, er an tiwele, ek tras no na kuile a enim nitar an ye hele, in ein atamas, er gwrhod pantwyn, cangl ti le chile le ropi lyn, e cwr sgornach na mara fwy chyng le bohor fwy volti dangyna. Canner a rabach na haise, lyn ti le dyna, ta maen yn sea'r trad na fi, a gynna gach tîr a gha gwysacht. Ta sga fwyl se er cho fa leis na dyna. Is go rugge de vreed and forged orca. Couldn't she munin in a chanadi dana, aga stubborn alta, er muish is er tear. Can she own a hula, fired horacha on maher never warafi, le hillamud saidur agas morhud mornialoch, brustin she a harabut seriach, egtroro areas. Y ta armaha le na wawa y gynnu ffyr chalw le na wan. Ni le ni, da feid e a chrogacht gyr feid y leis, siasaf y gynnu tylio chow mŵr son da gynnu. Agas i da chahaw da le cosn ti laidre. Ta an ton fadiga da haidhe. Ni le, 
Tora le hadam na bersach, agus ta a mwyntyr kroge ina gurihe. These are wise counsellors, of course, and they have already told us that they are apprehensive. So now they point out that fate cannot be trusted, and that when calamity casts her nets, what mortal can escape? Ach cean den a dhéana gur féidir leis éalú nere wélan an díá cléanér. Ké tóch a hácli gur féidir leis léim as an slí. Lé mwyntirus bú gói lát smédian an ánachan ar an dhéana dhéana agus spragané isteach an alienta. Tá sé dhó ianta ag an dhéana éalú astú. We get three more sets of back and forth verses now, as the chorus explains just how apprehensive they're feeling. What will happen if Persia is defeated and their men die? Marfado riaf, le jonu na nyeha, vwer an chinunt an lav wachter, agus hag ordu dos na persi tort vwy chogi, eskris an falhi le forham ruelia na markach, agus eliagan gatalha na kaharacha. Ach anish taid trae suil a chaha var reimus na heg eine. Hon vwyd mad a vech boise lehna heg baan u fwy rui chruig is mwninaka ins na ka blí taní a krahiag chan pasaste a yenaf dus na fyr. Sin e'n fa gwyl robi dofa ma chrui straka eg sgevle. O arim na bersach Er agla gamach dun fort mor susa falla er ruine is ka glesach si an gleach. Agus ka ganhach kahet kisia evregada uuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuu
You can subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And there's more information at persiansthepodcast.com. I hope you'll join us again tomorrow. Ihoan. Mm-hmm.